Hi everyone, today I'm gonna show you how to implement the parent document retriever. But as most of the time in my videos, we're gonna make a deep dive. We will not only use the pre-built one from Langchain, but also implement our custom document store using Postgres, since Langchain only provides an in-memory implementation. Let's start with the basics and discuss why you might actually need a parent document retriever. So when dealing with document retrieval, balancing the size of document chunks is crucial. First, let's talk about embeddings. An embedding is a numerical representation of text that captures its meaning and context in a way that can be easily processed by machine learning models or just by normal functions to compare these embeddings. For these embeddings to be clear and precise, document chunks need to be small enough to capture specific meanings without losing context. On the other hand, larger chunks are better at retaining the overall context of the content. So this is what you want to pass to the LLM. This helps in understanding the bigger picture and provides more comprehensive information. The challenge is to strike a balance between these two. The parent document retriever addresses this by initially splitting documents into small manageable chunks to ensure clear and precise embeddings. During the retrieval process, it fetches first the small chunks and then references the parent IDs to return larger, more contextual intact documents. So Langchain provides a convenient in-memory implementation of the parent document retriever. This is useful for quick setups and testing, but may not be suitable for production environments where persistent storage is required. So this is why we are gonna create our own implementation with a custom document store using Postgres. This store will persist documents in a database providing durability and scalability. And I will also show you how to do this by implementing the base store interface of Langchain. So there is a lot to learn. Let's jump straight into the code. Okay, I'm in VS Code and here on the left you can see the files we're going to use. The most important file is the parent document IPython notebook. Here you can find all the required code and notebook cells to run. Then we've got a Docker Compose YAML. This is for creating our Postgres or PG Vector database. Then we've got some helper functions, clear tables where we're going to delete everything from our tables and also inspect DB where we're going to see how many uh, child documents were created and compare that to the amount of parent documents we have. So that's the setup. Now let's jump in. And first, what we're gonna do is we install the dependencies. You will find a requirements.txt file there. So just install all the required dependency by pip install requirements.txt. Ideally, you're gonna use a virtual environment like me. I put it here just in the root directory of this project. And then you also need a kernel which references this virtual environment or this environment where you installed the requirements. Okay, now let's create the parent document retriever with the Langchain implementation. So we're gonna use Chroma as vector store and we're gonna use the in-memory uh, doc storage. So first what we're gonna do is we import some um, functions and classes from Langchain. So we use OpenAI embeddings. We also use Chroma directory loader because we're gonna load these files which are in the data folder. There we've got a food.txt, founder.txt and restaurant.txt. So some fictional information about a fictional restaurant. And yeah, this is what we're gonna work with. Then I'm gonna load my OpenAI API key with the load.env function. And this should also print a true. And as you can see, I got a true here and then we are good to go. So the first step is to load the data in memory. And now we've got this in memory. Then we create our uh, instance of the model. So we use chat OpenAI for that. We, and we are also gonna use Chroma as vector store. So let's create an instance of that. We pass the OpenAI embeddings here. And now we're gonna import from langchain.storage the in-memory storage. We also import the parent document retriever from the retrievers module of Langchain. Then we're gonna create an instance of the in-memory store. We also create a child splitter. So this is how we split our documents. So we use a recursive character text splitter and use a chunk size of 250. We can also use a parent splitter. So this will split documents in two steps. So first we have the initial three documents. Then we split it with a chunk size of 600 and the remaining documents are then again split it into chunk sizes of 250. So this is stored in the vector store. Sorry, this is stored in the vector store and this is stored in the doc store. If we don't use that, we're just gonna put the complete 
document, so the food.txt, and all of that into a single entry of our document store. Okay, now let's create our retriever. So we don't use the parent splitter, we're just gonna use the child splitter. So we split it um, just once, and then we're gonna create our retriever. We use the add documents method, pass the documents, which we created here, just by loading the documents, and we don't provide any IDs. So this is how we put everything in the vector store. And then we've got some functions in our doc store and also in our um, retriever. For example, we can use this yield keys. There we get the length of the list of our keys. I think it makes more sense to remove that, but you can see we've got three keys, which matches the uh, amount of documents we have. So let's maybe run it like this. And as you can see here, we've got three UIDs and these reference or got references between the child documents and the parent documents. So these are quite important for returning the actual larger objects. But all of that happens as most of the time under the hood and we can just run the get relevant documents on that retriever and we pass the question who is the owner and then normally we should be able to get that information. And here we can see this is of course not a final answer by an LLM, but we get the documents and here you can see this is the complete document. So this matches, I think this yeah, in the heart of the old court of Palermo. And yeah, this is this document and this is another one. So this is how you can do it. But of course, a lot of the complexity is now hidden. And we're gonna use a custom store to actually um, learn what's going on under the hood and do it ourselves. Okay, the first step is to run docker compose up. This will now download PG vector and set up everything correctly. So we can just use it here in the code. For you, it might take some time, but I already downloaded the package so I can just use it. Okay, so now let's create our custom store with Postgres. So the first step is to create a new document model, which is then serialized and then put into the um, database. So what we're gonna do here, we extend the normal model, which is used uh, by Langchain, which has got page content and metadata and extend that by a key. So we provide a new key and this key is used for referencing the object in the doc store to the object in the normal embeddings table. So let's run this, let's create this model and then we're gonna create our first table. So our table has got the name doc store and we've got two columns key and value. So in the key column, we provide a string, which is a UUID, and we set this as primary key. As value, we set a new column with type JSONB, and this JSONB type is gonna use because we serialize the document into a JSON object and save that as string in this column. So this is the only table we have to create because the other table is actually already provided by Langchain. We only have to create this new doc store. But of course our work is not done yet because we have to do all of the normally magic stuff, stuff what happens when the doc store is referenced by the normal embedding table. So this has to be implemented by ourselves. So to do this, we actually have to implement an interface provided by Langchain and this is the base store interface. So let's have a look at that what we have to implement there. And this is an abstract method. As you can see, we've got multiple ones. So we have to create an mget method. So this mget method is responsible for getting the values associated with given keys. Then we've got the second one, which is a setter method, mset. So we set the values for given keys. And then we also got mdelete, which deletes the given keys and their associated values. The last one is yield keys, and this returns an iterator that iterates over keys that match a given prefix. So these are the methods we have to implement to create our own custom store. So this is what we're gonna do with this class. The first step is here in the constructor is to create a new session object. This is needed to interact with the database. So we directly do that in the init method. And then we've got two methods, serialized document and deserialized document. This is where we're gonna ensure that we don't store a class 
just in the database, this is not possible. We have to store it as string. And this is what is gonna happen here. So we just serialize the class and create a normal dictionary from that. And the other way around, we do it like this. We pass a dictionary and create a new document instance. So this document instance is the inbuilt method from LangChain. Okay, next is the mget method. So now we implement all of the abstract methods we have to implement for actually making this doc store work. So in the mget method, we have got a list of keys. So this is a sequence of strings and we use that to query the SQL document table. And we want to filter this table where we've got these keys in our key column. And then we want to get all of the documents. So we save that in a list, but we of course cannot just return database objects. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna deserialize the document and we only serialize the value because this is actually what's needed for the length chain document because we don't need the key there. So this is what we're gonna return to the user. We iterate over that and return that to the user. So this is what you get with mget. The other way around is when you store new objects. This is a little bit more complex. So we've got key value pairs here. And what are these key value pairs? The key is just the identifier, which we use to identify the document. And then we've got the document itself. So we iterate over these key value pairs and we're gonna serialize the document. And then we've got a serialized document and we create a new list. So initially it's empty. And there we append the key in a tuple and also the serialized document. And this list is now used to create our SQL document table object where we pass in the key. So this is unchanged and we also pass in the value. So this is now the serialized value which can be stored in a database. So these are the documents to update and then we run the bulk save objects method. We pass the documents to update here as object and then we commit the session. So this gets now stored in the database. So the other way around. Okay, then we've got mdelete and here we also pass only a list of keys and then we're just gonna run the delete method on the database. So this is quite simple. We don't have to return anything here. This is just fine. Okay, the last method we have to implement is the yield keys method. So what's happening here? The yield, yield keys method retrieves and yields keys from a database. Optionally, if you provide a prefix, then we can filter that by a specific prefix. And here we just gonna iterate that and yield the keys. So this has to be a generator. This is actually very important to make everything work. So we don't have to directly use it, but this is how we have to implement it. Okay, now we are done with our custom store. So we call it Postgres store. Let's run the code. And now we're gonna use that store. Since this is related to a database, we also have to provide a database URL. So I made it work like this. So we have a user called admin, password called admin. It's running on localhost, and we're gonna use a database called VectorDB. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the normal PG vector vector store where we set the collection name to vector DB. We pass in the database URL and also the embeddings function to create our initial embeddings. So this is our vector store. Next step is to create the parent document retriever. As vector store, we pass the store we just created. And now as doc store, we provide this Postgres store. And we also have to provide a connection string for that. Again, we only use a single splitter, the child splitter, and then we add the documents as before. So let's do that. And again, we're gonna ask who is the owner? And again, we get the same questions back. Now let's actually see if that worked. And we got only three documents in the doc store, but more documents in the actual embedding table. So let's just run Python and then inspect DB dot pi and as we can see our doc store has three rows and our length chain pg embedding table has 93 rows so this is uh, done by the child splitter so this was split into more and smaller documents and our doc store has three rows so let's maybe clear that so we just gonna run python clear tables dot pi this gonna now delete everything from the table and if we do it again but this time we lose, uh, use a parent document splitter. So we're gonna have to create that actually first. So where was the parent document splitter? Here it was. So let's create that. 
go back down again. And now let's create a new parent document retriever with the parent and child splitter. We try that again. We should now get more documents. And if we inspect our database, we can see that now we've got 22 rows in our docstore table and 98 rows in our embedding table. And this is how it works. So when we implement this interface, this base store interface, we can use it by just running add documents. And we don't have to directly run mset or mget. This is everything done under the root here. Great, so this works. I know this video was quite advanced, and so if you've got questions, please let me know that in the comments. If you liked the video, please like it and subscribe to my channel for more advanced Langchain content. See you, bye bye.